Another set of milestones for the Navy's F-35C Lightning II as test pilots and engineers continue to get the aircraft ready to safely launch from and land or recover on all aircraft carriers at sea. The developments come at the completion of a series of flight tests at Joint Base McGuire-Dix Lakehurst in New Jersey. Uh, it's the only site in the, in the entire world that has uh, uh, all variants of, of catapults uh, and all variants of arresting gear uh, that uh, you know, we need. The first part of the series of tests include dozens of so-called roll-ins where the jet starts from a dead stop and rolls down the runway and its tail hook catches the arresting gear wire on the ground. This testing is critical for two reasons. Number one, the F-35C is a more precise air system and lands differently than older jets. And second, because Nimitz-class carriers in the fleet today like the USS Ronald Reagan and the USS George H.W. Bush have a so-called legacy arresting gear system that will remain in use for years. We'll start off by doing roll-ins and building up in speed, uh, characterizing how the loads increase on both the aircraft and the arresting gear. And, and finding out what those limits are. And then that, those limits will help us define what the ship's limits are going to be to keep the ship safe and the aircraft safe. Now that the test on the so-called Mark 7 Mod 4 arresting gear have wrapped up, it's up to the engineers to analyze the data. But uh, the end result of this will hopefully be a, uh, the initial uh, aircraft arresting bulletin or ARB uh, to allow the F-35C to, uh, uh, to trap on a Mark 7 Mod 4 arresting gear. And at that point, all ships, uh, all ships of the Nimitz class will be cleared. The other segment of the testing was to see how the F-35C handled with the EMALS, or Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. Crews completed 10 successful launches with the F-35C to gauge the new aircraft's response. EMALS is already installed on the USS Gerald R. Ford and will be installed aboard future Ford-class carriers. The newly gathered data will help with future testing. Shore-based testing is critical for ship suitability aircraft. We learn a lot by having the pilots fly around in the pattern, use the, whether it be a catapult or a resting gear launch. Uh, we, that's the way we test and evaluate the aircraft, and we take it to the extremes so that uh, we can evaluate and find out what the limits of the aircraft are. And moving forward, Hess and his team agree the lessons learned in this round of tests will contribute to future safe, secure, and efficient flight tests that support F-35 program certification and fleet requirements.